Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. In today's episode I've got the two Blue Eddy AC300 inverters set up with their two B300K batteries. Uh, they're all connected up. I've connected up the communications cable which is proprietary. It goes between the two units in the COM port. You can buy that at blueeddy.com. It's $39 uh, for that. And I'll put everything I use in the description section below in today's video in case you want to check it out. Uh, it helps me out. And the communication cable is used to talk for the two units to talk to each other. Without that, you're not going to be able to run split phase. And split phase is when you combine the output of two of these 120 volts, 120 volts into these two cables here. It's like a Y adapter. They hook into the 30 amp here and a 30 amp here on each unit and the output is here. Split phase, 240 volts. 220 volt outputs combined into a split phase and it syncs up and talks, get their phases aligned. And this is basically an L1430R 250 volt max cable output. It's a twist lock for your transfer switch, like a generator cable type. Um, and we're going to put this into my transfer switch and see how much I can run from my house today. We'll show you the estimates and the power loads. And the main importance of being able to run 240 volts is that some appliances, some things in your house need it to run. 120 volts won't cut it. One of those is a well pump, typically. The other one could be a dryer and the other one could be an oven. So those are 240 volts. I only have my well pump hooked up on my transfer switch and a couple other things, including the furnace. But we're gonna trigger a few of these things, turn on all the stuff and see how much I can run and get a good test. And I'm gonna zoom in the camera in a minute and we're gonna go in here and show you how to set up each of these units. You have to configure one as a master, one as a slave, so that they can talk to each other and sync up everything. So without further ado, let's get these things set up, zoom in the camera and get rolling. Come on, let's go. All right, we're gonna set this up for a split phase. Um, plug in the connectors, one each first, to 30 amps here. Okay, let's make sure they're solid. Get the other one to the 30 amp plugs. All right, so we got the other end that's gonna go to the uh, top here. The next step you have here, plug in the communication cable and that's done. Turn on one of these units. Turning this one on. Because the whole reason why I bought these is because I need to go split phase. This one's off over here and this one's on settings. Settings, next screen, machine type split phase. Hmm. We'll put this one as master. And it seems like he's liking it so far. It's giving me an error though. What is the alarm? Multi-phase integration error, communication error. And we'll see if it'll talk to the other one or just give a massive scream. This guy set the slave split phase. So split phase, this guy is a slave. And this one over here, as you can tell, split phase. And this is the master. So it stopped giving the alarm. You just gotta go through it and set up one as the M 
master and one is the slave. And then you gotta go through and once that's done, you're gonna see that, you're gonna hear that alarm buzzer that it's gonna sound and you can, once you selected the master and then the slave and the other one, and then it will stop. There you go, back home. Now we want to turn on the AC. If it isn't on, well, you need to uh, turn it on, obviously. Then you want to go over here to the other one and turn it on and the other particular one. And if you'll notice, okay, you can, it's a little fuzzy here, but if you come over here, it automatically turned the AC on with the, once you turn on the one, it turned on the other because it communicated. So we got both on, right? Let me back this out a little bit. So both are on. This is the master here. This is a slave for a split face. I'm gonna adjust the camera and we're gonna change it and then we're gonna hook it up to the main power for the transfer switch for the house and see how much power we got output and we're at 99% battery. So we got here my transfer switch. I have a manual cut off from the main and then once that's isolated, I'm going to uh, plug this in. This is my split phase cable and it goes into here. It's the twist lock and it's keyed. All right, we got the twist lock in to the transfer switch. So we're going to go to slowly turn on one switch at a time and uh, So this right here is a big, the big one. This is the well pump, it's 20 amp view. So let's turn it on. We got everything running off of the Blue Eddies now. Everything's cut over. I've got about 75% of the house running now off the transfer switch. And I'll cut to scene here and you can see what we have let, wired up. Zoom in to the master here. Let's see if we can get uh, output here. See what we're putting out. We are really not drawing much. This right here, the master shows it's putting out 170 watt output, right? And over on the secondary one, the slave, we are putting out uh, 273 watts. That's a total 571 watts running the house. Pretty good. And we're at 98% power here and 99 over there. We're not really dipping down much. I'm gonna go on to the app and see what we can uh, see. And here, the Blue Eddy app, you can see there's AC 300 and that's 145 watts output. And then you can switch over to the other one, 166 watts out. Now, what I'm gonna do is basically go and uh, see if I can kick the furnace on. We're gonna try to zoom in here and see if we can't get it to spike. That one right there. I'm gonna leave the camera running while I run and turn the furnace on. That should spike something. The uh, furnace has kicked on. Now that the furnace is kicked on, we've got uh, 371 watts from this and over here 133. So it really hasn't shifted too much. I'm still at 97 and 98%, so not too bad. Nice. All right, for my final test, we are going to turn on the power again, but this time we have more loads and we're gonna to try to kick the well pump on as well. Power is coming back on and I've turned a lot of the lights on in the house as well. You can see we have 280 watts out 
on this one and 660 over on this side. So what are we drawing? About almost a thousand watts total. Furnace just kicked on. Oh, there the well pump kicked on. The well pump kicked on. See, 1340 and 900. So we're getting about 2200 watts out. Got the well pump to kick on and that is 240 volts. That only runs as long as it takes to uh, fill up the pressure tank. But uh, you can see if you keep running the water for a long time, you're going to encounter uh, a big load. That shut off, water pump shut off, and uh, the load reduced back under 1,000 watts. So, my final thoughts on the Blue Eddy AC300 times 2 plus 2B300K batteries. Well, it did exactly what I wanted to do and ran my whole house. Granted, it depends on your uh, loads in your house and your uh, run times may vary. But as you saw from the graphs and charts that I put up before this, you can expand the system and with just a simple trickle input of 300 watts, about 30 hours a day per unit, you can get, extend your runtime almost by double. And if you add two more batteries, and you can get those refurbished as well if you want to save money for about $800 a piece or 1200 change newish, you can dramatically extend your system output and power and run for days with this system. You could even go as far as to set up a home smart panel for this setup and you can actually pull your power for your home during the peak grid times. And what that means is when the power is the most expensive from the grid, from the power lines, that you could pull power from your batteries and offset that power consumption from just taking it from your system. And then on off peak times, you could potentially just draw from the grid or charge up your system if need be. And with solar panels, you keep generating power in the meantime. The other positive things to note is, I don't have to haul a 100 pound generator outside, get it started in probably inclement weather, right? Run a big 30 amp twist lock cable from the system into the garage and the windows and then put it in, set it up. You know, I don't have to worry about fumes. You know, this system, makes so little noise because even when the fans kick on to cool the system, I didn't even notice it. So, and sometimes with generators, you'll have the up and down surge power, you know, as your system draws it or a wall pump kicks on. And if you have LED lights in your home, like I do for energy efficiency, sometimes you'll see the phase output might be a little bit off and those lights will be flickering and it'll drive you nuts. But with this system, it keeps the output of the system power at a steady sine wave. So you don't have fluctuating power, surges, any of that stuff. You get continuous steady power is what I'm getting at. So again, if anybody's interested in this system new on Amazon, I put some of the links of the stuff that I've reviewed today in the description section below. It helps me out. So thanks for coming along with me on today's journey to test and see if my system can power my home. Well, it sure as hell did, and I'm really happy with it. So thanks for watching. Remember this tech.
All right, for my final test, we are going to turn on the power again, but this time we have more loads, and we're going to try to kick the well pump on as well. Power is coming back on, and I've turned a lot of the lights on in the house as well. You can see how it's bumped up here on this, but also you can see we have 280 watts out on this one and 660 over on this side. So what are we drawing? About almost a thousand watts total. Furnace just kicked on. About a thousand watts, so Oh, there the well pump kicked on. The well pump kicked on. See? 1,340 and 900. So we're getting about 2,200 watts out. Got the well pump to kick on, and that is 240 volts. That only runs as long as it takes to uh, fill up the pressure tank. But uh, you can see if you keep running the water for a long time, you're going to encounter uh, a big load. That shut off, water pump shut off, and uh, the load reduced back under a thousand watts.